to Midtown Atlanta, where a woman who captured her own sexual assault on Facebook Live at a club is set to announce with her attorney that they have filed a lawsuit against Opera Atlanta. Now, she has filed this lawsuit against Opera Atlanta and other parties alleging negligence, failing to have the appropriate amount of security, uh, working that particular night, and also failing to monitor certain areas of the club. That is just among other claims involved in this. As you can see, we have a double box up here, and this, this has already started, so let's listen in right now. Well, we tried to reach out to Opera Nightclub without a lawsuit. We wanted to handle this civilly, peacefully, see if there was any way we could just talk. An idea I had was doing a Me Too event at Opera Nightclub and avoiding a lawsuit, seeing how this can get resolved. But what we were met with is silence. Uh, we were ignored. None of my phone calls were returned. None of my emails were returned. None of our letters were even returned. They did not have the decency to even apologize or reach out to Miss Island. So if that's the case, then we're going to file a lawsuit, especially when we had so many people that worked at Opera or were there that night reaching out to us, telling us what really happened that night. And what happened is shocking. A very experienced ownership group based out of Vegas has taken over Opera. And from what we hear and what we have reason to believe from our investigation, they had one-fourth the amount of security personnel working on the night of this incident. And this just wasn't just a club night. This was a large concert by an international megastar. And they only had one-fourth of the security guards working. Now, is there a problem with it being a hip-hop event that they not care? We'll find that out. But we know for a fact all of the security guards were not working, were not paid to work, and they knew this ahead of time because the tickets were pre-sold. Which is why they didn't have the security guards who monitored the crowds to see who's intoxicated or who's out of control and remove you. Which is why they didn't have the security guards to stop this assailant from taking Miss Island to an area that was closed and assaulting her again. People are only looking at the first part of the videotape. Miss Island was attacked twice. We had video proving that. Uh, so it wasn't just negligence, which is the basis of most lawsuits. This was reckless indifference. This was callousness. This was pure carelessness for patrons in the city of Atlanta on hip hop night. How would you keep your club open or decide to go ahead with a concert knowing you're understaffed? Knowing the dangers that it could put the patrons in. But Opera did it anyway, and they didn't even want to talk afterwards. Um, updates on the case so far. Uh, Mr. Williams was arrested. Uh, he is currently in jail. Um, he was arrested for aggravated sodomy. As many of you have seen, because of the break of Miss Island coming forward, another alleged victim has come forward and said that she was assaulted in the past by the same individual, has text messages to prove it, where she's arguing about uh, being raped and being drugged. Uh, it's the bravery of Miss Island that is allowing other people to come forward. Um, what really has hurt and has been an uphill battle in this case, but we've bravely taken it on, Miss Island has bravely taken it on, is what internet trolling and what victim shaming can do to somebody. It drove Miss Island almost to the point of taking her life. When you look online and all you see is people shaming you and blaming you and saying you wanted it and things like that, but we didn't allow that to happen. Miss Island said she was going to come forward and stand up and thank the women that have stood up for her and the men that have stood up for her and the celebrities that are now coming out and standing up for her. Because this has to stop. Believing a woman, waiting for the evidence, that's fine. But trying to attack someone and shut them up, that's not going to happen. Uh, Miss Island. Come on.
to attack someone and shut them up, that's not going to happen. Uh, Miss Island does have a few words before we continue. Uh, before I start, I do want to say that uh, I don't want to address any of the details of the night in question. Um, I do want to thank all of my supporters um, and all the other women that has come forward um, that have let edges any sexual assault involving the same gentleman. And um, as far as the victim shaming and the bullying, I just want to let you guys know that I won't tolerate it. I'm, I'm not going to put up with it. And that um, I'm going to continue to fight. I'm a victim, but uh, I'm a survivor as well. So, and I uh, just want to thank everybody. That's it. To clear up a few uh, facts in the situation, because that is what the typical basis is where people run off with things that they have no idea what's going on. They're totally wrong in their um, assessment of the facts. Uh, let me show you one, uh, actually a few things. Everyone has questioned how was it that uh, Miss Island was able to hold on to her phone while this is going on. It must have been made up. Who would hold on to their phone? As you'll see, her phone has a lock on it. It has a grip around her finger. So while she was filming the incident, she couldn't drop her phone. She wasn't holding on to it for the fun of it. It was hooked to her hand, which is why it's everywhere filming and the video moves around. It's looped to her hand. The police also have uh, possession of this. dancing uh, and screaming and things of that nature. What they didn't realize, if you slow it down, there are definite times where Miss Island is fully incoherent. Eyes roll to the back of her head and then she's assaulted. This wasn't some willing participant agreeing with what was going on. If you watch the video and you slow it down, you can see she has totally lost consciousness at large parts of this incident which allowed uh, this to happen. As you'll see here, which was a major violation by the club, Mr. The Assailant was allowed to carry her away to a back room. You'll see this is him carrying her Carrying her through the crowd, fully tucked as she's passed out, carrying her away. Now, per club policy and per every standard in the industry, security intervenes if a person is too intoxicated or drugged or inebriated. They take possession of the person. You don't carry someone out of a club, but yet this was allowed to happen because they did not have security there. That's the failures of this club. That's the failures of this club. And lastly, once again, to get this situation off of everyone focusing just on the dance floor scene, this, ladies and gentlemen, we've had it professionally subtitled, is the back room in opera on their patio, which you are not supposed to be in. not on the dance floor. This is in a dark room in the patio area, which we've already talked to former employees that you're not supposed to be out there. At the end, you hear someone come running out there saying, hey, stop. Unknown man finally comes and says, stop. This is not on the dance floor. This is where he 
he carried her to afterwards. I saw his statement say he carried her to her seat. To his, to her seat. That's a lie. He carried her to this darkened area where we also have reason to believe the security cameras weren't working. So thank God she was on Facebook Live. So it was two incidents, not just the dance floor situation. So that's the danger of the club. Everyone wants to say, oh, you're just looking to see somebody. That is not accurate. I'm looking to prevent this from happening to another young lady or young man in this city again. Because if you don't have security at the club watching where people are drinking, where people are having fun, when does the next guy just pick up some young lady, carry her into a room, and sexually assault her? If security's not there doing their job. But I guarantee you after this lawsuit, security will be picked up, not only at opera, but at all of these clubs. There's absolutely no way this should have happened. I have had employees call me bursting in tears, screaming that this should not have happened. But they knew security was inadequate. But yet, hey, it's hip-hop night. Oh, it's R&B night. It, you know, it doesn't matter. What matters in the city of Atlanta? And I understand it's a new group that just bought opera based out of Vegas. Doesn't matter. That's not how we operate in this city. You will have the same type of security you have at the other types of events. Or don't have the concert. Um, other than that, uh, any general questions? When did the new company take over? Three months ago. Oh, wow. When you said one-fourth of the security was working, is that one-fourth that was required or one-fourth that no more Both. We've talked to people in the industry that... Uh, know exactly how many security guards should be working, especially for a concert where you should have increased security. Because I've seen as a huge draw. Pre-sold tickets. And I never heard of them. A handful of security guards when it takes at least four to work one door is, is, is pure insanity. The amount of the crowd, the size of the club. All right, right now you're listening to attorney Chris Stewart of the Stewart Trial Attorneys Firm. In Midtown Atlanta, speaking about the alleged sexual assault that occurred at Opera Atlanta in Midtown Atlanta, we also heard from the victim who said she wasn't going to address the details of this assault, but wanted to say that she is a fighter. She remains strong. Uh, she has been trolled on the Internet. Her attorney also spoke about what that has done to her personally, but she said it's not going to let not going to affect her. The attorney also said how he had reached out to Opera Atlanta about this alleged sexual assault and said that they've been met with silence, no phone calls, not an apology. He said that they were working with one-fourth of the amount of security that they normally would work with, and he said this was not a normal club night, that this was a large concert. He also explained how the victim was able to Facebook Live the alleged sexual assault by showing the back of her iPhone, which had one of those finger hooks. So it was looped in through her finger, and that is how she was able to record exactly what was going on. And if you were just joining us and didn't see it, I can tell you what we witnessed was extremely disturbing. Uh, you could hear her saying, help, help, no, don't do that. They actually put subtitles on the video here at this uh, law firm to show you exactly what was unfolding. So again, they are suing Opera Atlanta over this alleged sexual assault. The suspect is now in jail, and after she came forward with these allegations, the attorney who you're just listening to wanted to credit her for that bravery because now other victims apparently are coming forward. We do have Channel 2's Taish Fernandez. You heard her there. She asked the first question. She's at this news conference. She is going to be live ahead for Channel 2 Action News at noon. And then also we're going to have much more reaction for you coming up on Channel 2 Action News at 4 from the club. Get their answer to all of these charges, which you just heard from those attorneys. And much more information that Taisha and her photographer will be gathering, as you saw. We still have that news conference going on. But right now we need to leave so we can get prepared for Channel 2 Action News at noon. So keep it right here. And also we uh, later on this afternoon will be live streaming for you an event, a protest.